Hey everyone, welcome back. I am really excited for us to be trying this asynchronous video model. I haven't done it through video before, so it's my first time really producing lots of uh, videos of things, which I think is pretty cool. Um, to give you a little heads up of how this is gonna work, um, I'm gonna essentially treat this like I would a live lecture. However, I'm gonna pre-record it into a bunch of smaller videos. And the reason to make them smaller is to give you opportunities to take breaks, catch up, think back at what you just saw, because sitting through 50 minutes straight can be pretty tough. What this ends up meaning, and, given, and with the flexibility that video provides, the videos might be a little bit more, a little bit less than 50 minutes every day. Um, this is one of the nice things about having this freedom of not being constrained in the daylight hours, is I, I can kind of make sure we pay full attention to something than me going through lecture I did on Wednesday, super, super rushed to make sure we hit all the, the talking points I wanted to hit. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you um, kind of what we're gonna be talking about today, which is list. Um, but in this video, what I really wanna focus on before I talk about any content or what this whole lecture is gonna focus on, I wanna share a couple announcements and talk a little bit more about why we're doing this asynchronous model and how, how this might work in, in practice. So some announcements. We released Project Zero on Wednesday. I sent an email about that to the class on Ed. The instructions are on the course website, on the calendar, or under the projects page. It's due next Wednesday. Now, that's a pretty fast turnaround, but the reason is this assignment is not supposed to be a super, super big project. It is gonna be a lot of you setting up the tools that we're gonna need for this quarter and it's also supposed to focus on refreshing you on 143 concepts. So concepts that a lot of you've expressed interest in saying, hey, I don't feel super comfortable with the 143 material. It might have been a while. This assignment is for you. It's really there to help you kind of ramp up on the 143 things we kind of want you to be more comfortable with. And so it's okay if this takes you a little while, but we want you to start thinking about this early um, so that we can start moving on in, in the course in later weeks. So the goals for this assignment are to refresh 143 concepts, set up IntelliJ and tools we will be using in this class, including Java, this thing called GitLab that uses this tool called Git, and CheckStyle. I want to talk a little bit about CheckStyle for these assignments. CheckStyle is a um, program that automatically checks your code for style errors, and it will report them to you. So we have you set it up so that you can see style errors um, that any, your code might have. And for those of you that are familiar with how CC 142 and 143 work here, unlike them, we do not have any manual style checking. Check style is our, our truth in terms of if your code meets our style uh, as standard. So you'll know programmatically whether your code is good style or not. Um, some of the projects also include write-up portions where you might run experiments and justify your decisions. But in terms of uh, like kind of what we mean by code quality or style, check style is our source of truth. And we also want to introduce you to this idea of testing your code, talking about JUnit testing and unit testing. And all of these terms and tools are outlined in the project spec. So you'll probably be doing a lot of learning this week if you aren't familiar with those tools, which most of you probably haven't seen before. If for any reason you are missing permissions on any of the tools that you need access to, like GitLab or Gradescope or whatever, um, on the assignment spec and on our course canvas, there's a link to a missing permissions form. Just go ahead and fill that out and we'll try to get you access to that as soon as we can. Another announcement, I sent this on Wednesday, but I also wanted to spend some time talking about this in video. We've set up our Discord. And so Discord is a chat service uh, that's fairly popular. Um, and we want to use this primarily for, from our end as the course staff as an office hours queue. So this is where you are going to go and actually let us know if you have a question during the TA's office hours that you want help in person. And what I mean by that is uh, through a video chat. Um, how it's going to work is we have a channel in there called OHQ for office hours queue. And you'll send a message. You'll tag the TA on duty with the at signs. So you'll say at TA on duty. And you actually write TA on duty. We have a whole setup that aliases TA on duty to wh whichever TA has office hours at that time. And then you describe your question. And one nice thing is you also sh should include anyone you're working with. So if you're trying to queue up about a, a project question and it's one of the later projects where you have a partner, um, you can tag your partner in your message and when the TA is ready to help you, and we have a little emoji reactions to keep track of 
who's being helped, who's still waiting in line. Um, once you uh, are ready to be helped, the TA will send you a message saying, hey, here's a Zoom link for us to discuss. And they'll include your partner in, in, in case you include one uh, in that message. So the office hours queue is kind of our structured place to manage office hours. And I think we'll get used to it as you see examples of people posting questions and you, you use it. But we chose Discord for a reason. Um, one is we were really intentional about this idea of community building. I've been looking at the survey results and a lot of people have been a little concerned about how distant COVID has made us, particularly when you're thinking about trying to find partners for the class or study groups. Discord is supposed to be the place for you to form a community so you know people in this classroom that you can reach out to for a, a study group. Um, additionally, um, when we're thinking about um, online spaces, having places that you can send quick messages and uh, more natural conversations is so much more important than just only being able to post on the message board or only being able to communicate during Zoom, like live class sessions on chat. And so we really want this to be a place for you. The other reason we're doing this is we want it to be a seamless queuing experience for office hours. Um, in previous quarters, when I was trying to run office hours on Zoom, I had lots of, I heard lots of frustration from students when we just use the waiting room feature in Zoom and you just went there and you're in this black hole of a line and you have no idea when you're going to be helped next or who many, how many people are there waiting and you just don't, maybe the TA just left and you don't know. So all of that was very frustrating. And so we want to make this a very seamless uh, experience where you know how many people are in the queue in front of you. Um, you can hang around and get a notification when the TA is ready. So I think this is going to really solidify this process and make it much more seamless. And you can also be in a somewhat like a space what real office hours are like. One of the things I think I miss most about being in person and having office hours is just the natural discussions we can have with students in the room uh, during that, that time. And so Discord has all these other places where you can chat. And so if we have channels for project and exercises and you can go there while you're waiting in line for the office hours and say, hey, I'm really stuck on this problem. Does anyone have any ideas? Or I'm really confused about this topic. So I think from what I heard in the summer, they really like Discord. And I, I think you'll like it too if you give it a try. One thing I have to mention about Discord though, because Discord is not affiliated with the university in any way. Um, it is a third party tool. So we wanna make sure that you know how to share your data on Discord. Um, it's not like GitLab or Ed, which is kind of associated with the university. Um, there are two main ways to join Discord. The first is to create a Discord account, which requires entering your email. Um, you can log in or log out whenever you want. And it's kind of nice because it's a, I think it's a bit easier to meet people and build a community. You can have a profile picture, you have a consistent name. Um, you don't ever have to put in your real name or your real email address if you if you don't want to. Uh, but the, one option for joining Discord is actually creating an account. However, we totally want to respect if you do not want a real Discord account. Um, so we we provide two links. The second one lets you join anonymously. If you join anonymously, it makes you a, a temporary name. Once you close the window, it's gone forever. Um, it makes it Discord is very simple to use. So you could use either option, whichever one you like. Um, and it, we're just a reminder that it is a third party app. You do not need to enter any personal information, but you're welcome to. Um, and we want you to have this a space to form this community and have fun. Um, the TAs and I are not constantly monitoring the Discord um, outside of our office hours. So please do remember that we want this to be a respectful and inclusive place. So please make sure that your messages are appropriate um, and consider how people might read your message uh, before you send it. So think about a good filter for whatever you might send is if you'd actually say something like that in cl in the classroom um, is a good filter for what you might may or may not want in uh, in Discord. And we will uh, every once in a while check up on, uh, on the Discord community, making sure everything looks fine. And we will delete messages if we, if we think that they cross a, a line. So we prefer if you just avoid crossing lines in the first place. Okay. So announcements, um, uh, oh, this slide is just completely wrong. I thought I updated this already. Um, I will not edit this out in post because I don't know how to edit videos. Um, office hours started yesterday on Wednesday. I already sent the links, um, but I do want one of these notes that is relevant is that 
the TAs and I will continuously monitor Ed. Uh, that's where our official question answering uh, will happen. Uh, and we only monitor Discord during office hours. So if you're like messaging us on Discord really late at night, there's no guarantee that we'll respond. I also have on the um, on the course staff page, I have a one on one meeting that you can schedule with me. So if you ever want to talk to me about anything outside this class, course concerns, thinking about how to apply these things to pass 373, talking about interviews or job advice, really anything, you can always schedule a meeting with me. I'm intending these one on one times to be more of outside of coursework help. Um, because we have so many office hours, including my own for people getting help in the course. Um, and you can also talk about these things with any of the TAs if you want to as well during their office hours or if you schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with them outside of it. And I was also looking at the 140, the, the survey for um, uh, the start of the quarter survey, and I saw a lot of people are a little anxious about remembering 143 room material because it might have been a little while since they take 143. And so I just want to say, don't worry. We know people are coming from lots of backgrounds in terms of programming experience. Project Zero is all about helping you get up back to speed. I also published a review guide on Wednesday's lecture. Uh, some past TAs basically wrote like a 20 page document of all of 143 in one document. And so you could use that as a, as a structured review. And we're also thinking about topics for the first couple weeks as constantly hitting back on some 143 material. So hopefully this will help you feel more comfortable with all of these things. Now, the last thing I want to talk about in, in this part of this video, so I want to talk a little bit about this flipped classroom idea that we're doing, why we're watching these asynchronous videos right now. I mentioned in the syllabus and in my welcome email that learning happens by doing. Like, people don't learn by passively listening. There is this old, um, there's this term people think of is the, the transmission model of education where I talk and your brain absorbs. We usually use the term transmission model of education a bit pejoratively, meaning we kind of talk about that as like, oh, we kind of know that that's not how that works anymore. You're you kind of antiquated way of thinking about learning. Learning happens by deliberate and active practice. And so our goal is to provide environments for you to actually go about this practice. Um, I said in the syllabus, I gave lots of examples of learning how to ride a bike. No one does that on Zoom. You have to actually go there and ride the bike. Um, but I think I, if I talk about an experience of going through a lecture, nodding along, thinking you kind of understood everything, and then going to go do the homework and having absolutely no idea where to start, to me, I'm, I would argue that that means you didn't learn anything from that lecture. You might have heard facts and you might have learned some things. But if you're not able to solve the problems we intended you to do, that means you didn't learn the things we intended you to learn. Okay? And so our job here, and what, what the goal of this flipped classroom is, is to take away that disconnect. Instead of making it the job of you to go teach yourself and learn the material for the first time when you go and sit down and do the homework or the exercises, we want to make that learning happen during the week in class time. And doing that requires practice and doing uh, talking with your peers and metacognition that I talked about in, in uh, our first day of class. So our goal is to provide opportunities for you to engage in learning. Um, and so the, this flipped classroom model is designed to put a spotlight on this deliberate practice. We move content sharing to these videos that you can take at your own pace. Um, but And we highlight time for you to actually do practice with your peers in a structured environment and hopefully the goal is you learn these things better. So when you go and do the homework, you have a much easier job of tackling those things. Okay, now um, one thing I have to mention uh, is the flipped classroom kind of depends on your willingness to engage in the course and with your peers. It's totally possible for you to lone wolf this and learn this on your own, but it's not my recommended route. Learning in social environments can be so much more beneficial. I talked a bit about that metacognition, thinking about your thinking. A really good external factor for metacognition is talking to other students because you can hear them talk about like, oh, I really struggled with X or they ex make an explanation in a way that you didn't think about. And all of those external factors help your metacognitive processes. Um, so learning in so social environments can be so, so much more beneficial. So we recommend you take the time out of the schedule that you um, that you signed up for in this class to come and engage with us. 
But again, none of this is strictly required. Like it's not worth points. I'm not gonna take points off if you miss days. But I would say you should definitely be making a schedule to come to these things. I will mention these item pool videos are not gonna be entirely passive. We'll have some chances for you to engage with the video like in this demo I'm about to show you. And this is the reason why I'm using item pool rather than just YouTube or Panopto. So whenever you see one of these blue so slides, these item pool slides, it means I'm actually gonna ask you to pause and think about a question. Now, this is a, just a simple demo question that we don't have any course content associated to, but, um, and the video will actually pause by itself when I'm done setting up the question, but it will ask you to think, take a second, think about what we were just talking about and see if you can apply that. And taking those steps of actually stopping, making a prediction, seeing if you're right or not. And more importantly, the usually these questions involve why, trying to understand the why of something. This will help aid you in this process of learning. So at this point, the video is going to pause and ask you to enter which one of these dogs do you think is the cutest? Okay, so hopefully you got it right. They all are the cutest dog. I personally think that A is the cutest, cutest dog, um, but everyone can have their own choice. And so periodically, when you see these blue slides, I mentioned that these videos will pause and give you a chance to think about actual course content, but this is just a demo. In the remaining videos, we'll actually talk about some content for this course, some bit review of CSE 143 and kind of what the lecture is really about outside of me telling you what this asynchronous model looks like.